Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in today. We are playing some more Plunder. I hope you guys aren't sick of it because I love this deck. But this deck's actually different from the one I've normally been playing. Uh, as you can see, I've got a little bit of my LP back. We've been climbing. I played some HX King yesterday on stream. That went well. I think I went 4 and 2. And then I played some Plunder that night. This new list, I went 4 and 1. So finally, finally climbing. We need to get about to 110 to 140, I believe, to qualify for seasonals. Um, but besides that, there's the Mastering Terror tournament this Saturday that I'm looking to play in. So I'm um, looking to figure out my lineup, how that goes, and I definitely, definitely, definitely think I'm going to run Plunder, which is other decks around it that I'm not so sure about. But this deck specifically, I think it was Scissors Box uh, on his channel, he posted this like deck guide, and so you can go check out his uh, opinion on it as well. Now, most of this deck is the same from what I've been running, still like the Spirits and Leash deck with Feel the Rush, but we cut Zap Sprayfin and Piltdown and Castaway. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of Castaway, um, like the, oh, the Attune was nice. And, like, a weapon could be good to get, like, a scout potentially on a champion, but I feel like it didn't really work out all that often. And so I feel like this has a lot more utility for your main win condition, which is working towards getting your champions. So you cut Zap Sprayfin and put in two copies of Babbling Beard. Babbling Beard always, always, always hits your champions. The only d cards in your deck with five or more power are your champions. So you'll always hit Gangplank or Sejuani, which is really, really nice just for the champion consistency because your deck is so reliant on hitting them to win the game. Obviously, you kind of already have one Hail Mary with Feel the Rush, and so now just having like that more consistent tutoring earlier in the game that is attached to a pretty big body is pretty pretty nice for the deck. And the next card that I've loved so far, Monster Harpoon. Um, six mana, deal five to a unit, but with Plunder, it only costs four mana. So that's like a really, really efficient removal for your deck, since usually you um, almost always activate Plunder. Now, I, um, I love plunder back when riptide sermon was in the deck but now it's just not so great i don't think um the deal three to end spawn three it doesn't quite hit like quite as many power units deal three compared to deal five is probably worth the extra ability to do it at fast speed save two mana um but you don't get the spawn three instead so i think it's a fantastic card in this deck and it's especially good against decks like the jinx echo decks or jinx lulu uh, Kettering and Gwen, it hits all those champions, and to some extent it's even good against decks that you can maybe struggle to close out the game. Like for example, Aatrox, Kane. Um, they usually have pump spells, but if you damage them in combat when they try to attack, to try to pick off your units with Challenger Kane, or swing in with Aatrox saying you can't trade, you can follow up with the Harpoon to finish it off. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I'm really excited because Plunder's just been such a fun deck for me over the past few months, and this new list seems to be performing pretty well. Overall, Plunder's been a very good archetype, and uh, I feel like it just has lots of flexibility into a variety of matchups in the meta right now. So, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I love the play patterns. Ugh, oh, I love... Oh, I say this to, like, every matchup, I suppose. But I love testing these weird matchups, like, um, High Armored Ignora is an awkward matchup for us. Hmm. I don't think we want to keep Sejuani in our opener, because we can potentially draw Babbling Bjerg or Sejuani later on. They're going to have lots of chump blockers, so I don't know if we're even going to necessarily, like, push that much early damage. But I feel like we really need to look for something more consistent in the early game here. So I'll pitch our champions, although I really, really don't like pitching Sejuani when we want to kill Heimerdinger really bad. But I think there's just such a good chance of us getting Sejuani again with the double Babbling Bjerg and just drawing it to Sejuani. That will probably be fine. This does really stink our turn, or our draw just kind of, like, is super awkward. We can go into turn 2 and just play Tusk Speaker, although I usually prefer to play him on our opponent's turn to get like that free Plunder Trigger. And it like, makes us delay Spirits Unleashed, but I think it's probably worth it to get the Plunder Trigger guaranteed from his skill, so even if I kill Tusk Speaker, uh, we'll at least get that Plunder Trigger down. I'll take this attack. He's not dying to uh, Spirits Unleashed. And we get like an overwhelm damage. And it'll make it slightly more awkward if we can hit like um a Mirai Warden. Once we get Spirits Unleashed, they hopefully will kind of like ha have to try to drain out their chump blockers. They're going to consistently have them for the rest of the game, I imagine. There's Gangplank. Now we could just pass and play Spirits Unleashed next turn. And we'll have Spirits Unleashed plus Black Market Merchant. I think that's fine. Our hand's just really, really awkward. 
I mean, to a certain extent, maybe it's fine that we don't have Mirai Warden yet. Because if we played Mirai Warden before Spirits Unleash came down... Perfect, okay. If we played Mirai Warden before Spirits Unleash came down, they'd be able to get lots of value out of their Vile Feast and Quietus. So the fact that we haven't really had a ton of early units to play might end up not hurting us as much as I thought at first. Because now, like, our 2-mana 3-3, a 1-mana 4-4, like, that's really good. Um, and I think I'll play the 3-3... Okay, now I'll just play the 4-4. Four, four. I, I would like to get the job, but we can just play him next turn. And um, this will make it to the Junk Construct can't really efficiently trade. The champions are a problem. We do have Monster Harpoon for that. I don't think we want to use Monster Harpoon on Nora. So we'll probably just have to let Nora kind of like get free reign for a little bit until we find Sejuani potentially. Or like if we end up just having to like play a, a Make It Rain into Spirits Unleashed and it just like happens to kill her. I don't think we're going to be really target her all that much. But that's obviously one thing Zap Spray Friends nice at blocking Nora, but I don't really think that's too big of a concern for a meta call simply to block Nora. I don't think this is the worst matchup in the world for us. It's just going to be tough to like push damage until we have our champs leveled. Because they're going to have lots of chump blockers. I always like Agna I have Naga Burst too. It's nice for setting up interesting open attacks. Warning Shot. That's actually interesting. So now we don't have to play Make It Rain. We can go Warning Shot plus Black, Mer Black Market Merchant and still have Monster Harpoon up for a Heimerdinger. And if they play Heimerdinger, I will just shoot him on sight. Nice. I think we can just instantly shoot him. Because if they have Spell in hand... They can play it no matter when we try to kill them, but I don't want to give them the chance to play like a slow spell. I don't think they really play too many slow spells for two mana besides like Quietus. But it'll, it'll limit the windows for them to get turrets. And this also potentially makes uh, X1, so it'll be an easy target for Make It Rain as well, which isn't the end of the world. Nice, okay, no turrets is really good. I think I let this go through. I don't want them to get a portal. Because we can go wide next turn, and that'll make it the easiest for us to potentially push damage. Rather than losing our blocker, replacing our unit, but then they might also be able to replace their unit, so we don't really get wide at all. Hey, Max, what's up? Ooh, that's a good one. I like stealing that. That's actually really, really good. That can ping turrets, it can ping conchologists, and it's also health that they're not getting. Plus, I just think Unspeakable Horror is a fun card. I always love hitting um, Cygnus. Okay, what do we do here? What if we just play Gangplank? They rip a Vengeance. They're down to two mana. Then we can play Nightfall Activated Unspeakable Horror. I think that's fine. For two. Pink something like their Jump Construct. I like that. I don't think Open Attack is all that great here. I don't know what they have for two damage in Bandle City. Because Group Shot, you have to have several units, right? I don't think they have too many things for two damage. Open attack in there would be would be fine, but we put a lot more pressure on them. Pressure on them this way. Like if they don't have an answer for gangplank, we're looking really really good. Nice. Okay. Um, interesting little decision here. We could just swing in, see how they block, and then ping their blocker on gangplank to keep him healthy and just push to overwhelm damage anyway. Or like to make sure jagged butcher stays alive. I guess we'll see what happens. I don't think we care if he goes down to 3 health. Because Piercing Darkness deals 5, if I'm not wrong. It does deal 5. So he dies either way to Piercing Darkness. So I think we're going to just ship it in here. It doesn't particularly matter if he gets damage on him. Like They could end up going like Group Shot Pokestick. If they Vengeance Gangplank... Wait, we haven't activated Plunder this turn, right? So I guess if I do Vengeance Gangplank, we'll have to use our um, Unspeakable Horror on face. Okay. Sure. This is fine.
Maybe it's not fine. We're like slowly losing steam, but we've we've got stuff to do to keep leveling up our champs. And it's obviously one vengeance down. It just makes it harder for them to stop our stuff. At a certain point, like, we have a Spirits Unleashed down. Um, once we get our champs, they'll be really big for, like, whittling down with damage spells. As long as we don't run into a, a Ruination, pretty much their best answer is... Oh, no, they play Mini Morph, right? Not, 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 I don't know if they play Ruination. They may play one copy, but I imagine they play Mini Morph. Okay, um, interesting decision here again. If they play a Heimerdinger, we'd have to go make it rain into Monster Harpoon. If they don't have a Heimerdinger, I'm pretty happy to just drop a Mirai Warden and uh, I have Nagabros and then open attack. Okay, that's not how that works. I guess we have to take this then. I don't want to blank Pale Cascade. I don't think that's worth it. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if they have Heimerdinger, they can't create any portals this turn, so I think we're fine to develop. Like Heck yeah, so three is super cool. Like, an X, a three, a th one mana 3-3 three, three is so nasty. We got 6-5 worth of stats for 2 mana since we have Spirits Unleashed. That feels really good. It's going to be very hard for them to keep their units alive in trades. Like, they very rarely get profitable trades. I think I will just... I have Nagabros here. I don't want to waste the mana. We can't kill Heimerdinger this turn anyways. So we'll just dig closer to our champs. Heck yeah. Okay. And Gangplank. Okay, okay. Again, we don't have leveled Gangplank yet. I guess Warning Shot, then Slam Gangplank would be fine. Oh no, wait, if they make Feel the Rush cost more. Oof, okay. Uh, actually, that's really annoying that they hit Monster Harpoon too. Because that is like our best answer to stop their champions. My thought with Feel the Rush is they might run Puzzling Signposts, but I don't think we really care at that point. It's kind of just like, okay, we just slam it next turn. <laughs> really? I am surprised. I thought they'd go Monster Harpoon for sure. I still think we're fine to play Gangplank next turn. It's a Gohard deck. Oh no, it's Conchologist. Okay. So I imagine this is just setting up for Vile Feast. I was going to say, I did not think that would be a Gohard deck. Oh, just Pogi Sticks. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we don't really have any good plays besides just playing Gangplank. Like, what do we do? Gangplank? I guess into Pale Cascade to keep him alive from, like, a Vile Feast here again? Yeah, I really don't like going Make It Rain, Jagged Butcher. I feel like that's really slow. We might kill, like, the Otterpus. Then we only have another unit that could easily chump lock with some portals. This feels tough. I think we're fine since we have already forced out one Vengeance and we have Field Rush in hand. If we don't play anything else this turn, we can just play um, Field Rush. I guess that walks a little bit into Ruination. Another Vengeance. Maybe we can get in some damage. I think I'm fine with playing Jagged Butcher here, uh, simply because we're only pushing damage if we go wide here. We can't open attack, like they'll just block block. But then we can't play... Then we can't play FTR, so I think I'll just attack. We'll let them block, and then we'll just slam FTR next turn. Hopefully they tap below Ruination first, so then we can open attack the following turn. And then I think we're okay. And this block doesn't really do much for them, like uh, since it doesn't set them up for a Pokestick or Vile still. I'll also take an excuse to use Pale Cascade, I suppose. Then we could play um, 
our expensive Mega Rain, Jagged Butcher, potentially another card next turn, and that'd be fine as well. Glimpse? Okay. That's fine. So they have 10 mana next turn. So if they pretty much play any card, we're free to uh, slam Feel the Rush next turn. Okay, that's card two. So now we don't even have to play Mega Rain this turn. Heimer. How sad are we if they have Puzzling Signposts in hand? Maybe really sad. So 4 mana plus 7 mana? That's 11 mana? That's fine. I guess that's fine, right? Wait. How do we want to do this? 6 mana plus 6. Not enough. What if we just play our dudes? Let's see. If they have Puzzling Signposts, next turn we just play um Normal Sejuani. All right, okay. And so we have to open attack though, because Ruination's a card. What if we don't open attack? What? Oh, I forgot. I was looking away from my screen for a minute. Like I was literally just like looking across the room off in, in a world of thought. And I, I hear the animation of timer doing swinging into attack. I'm like, why are they attacking? But okay, that makes more sense. Um, next turn, if we don't open. This Make It Rain being so expensive is actually kind of an issue now. Because we could open with Make It Rain to trigger Sejuani level up. That's fine. Like, I think we're just in a much, much, much better situation if we just open attack, though. The only card that really, really beats us here is Ruination. Like, they could have a Mini Morph. Or another Vengeance. But we'd still have one level champ on board, right? And they both have Overwhelm, so these little dudes don't matter at all. I think, I wonder if they have like a dead Quietus in hand. Like these Pokesticks and any Vile Feasts or Quietus have been really, really, really awkward for our opponent. Uh, Mini Morph doesn't particularly hurt us either. Wow, we have double Sejuani in hand. That's actually kind of interesting. We could like force lethal here if they don't have Mini Morphs. And we can like just stack up a whole bunch of damage on our own units. Okay, they do have Minimorph on one. Sure. No way! Wow! Okay, that's pretty annoying. You can't block with Heimer, because then I just hit Make It Rain, so they're going to give us at least one Plunder trigger. That's so funny. Wow. Double Minimorph moment, yeah. I can't believe they had both in hand. They've already used two Vengeances and two Minimorphs, like... What are they going to do from this point on unless they find a Ruination? Because as soon as they block and they play these dudes, we just play um, Mega Rain. And they have to play it because it's fle fleeting, right? So we get to wait until they play both. I've been tabbed out putting together some decks. Nice. And I tuned into, the I tuned into that sadness. Yeah, yep. Perfect! Oh, baby! Okay, I think I'll just shoot, um, I'm redoing it right now. Hey, Rocket in the face, how's it going? Hey, Vistavith, how are you doing too? Everybody's tuning in. Hello, everybody, hello. Hope you all having a good morning. Enjoying some plunder, yeah? Oh, baby, that's nasty. That's just enough for Spirits Unleashed and Sejuani. We do still have a long ways to go on their health, but we're really far ahead on board. That's pretty useless for them. This Pale Cascade is going to get them good at some point. I just, I know it. I made Mastermind's deck and got seven wins in a row. What's that? Is Mastermind's a player and like you made that deck? I'm not sure what that means off the top of my head. <laughs> 
Seven wins is nice though. That's like a really decent win streak. Holy smokes, that's cool. Hmm, I love that card so much. Oh, Heimer Jace. Okay, okay, that's really cool. Heimer Jace is a fun one. I haven't seen that in a long time. That was a meta deck for quite a while, wasn't it? Like, um, two seasonals ago, maybe? That's cool. That's a fun one. Okay, I think we just open attack, right? Cool thing here, they don't have any blockers. So if they try to do something silly, we can go Fury of the North and Pale Cascade. Oh, baby. They're gonna have to have a third Minimorph for a third Vengeance. <laughs> Surely not, right? Oh? Now I'm sitting with 105 LP and waiting for Seasonals. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm at like 80 right now. I still got a little bit to go. Oh, okay. So, we get Sejuani back. We can push 4 extra damage. Is that worth it? I kind of want to use this Pale Cascade, to be honest. I mean, I don't think we can do much about it. I feel like we should just let it go. We might need Sejuani. In case they find another Runation or another Crumble or something. Next turn I'll use Shell Shocker plus Pale Cascade as my two actions to force our opponent to do stuff. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's actually really bad. Their portals are going to be pretty nasty, huh? Maybe we should just Pale Cascade now. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so they can't get the portal from Nora now. Woof! Good, good. They just keep finding answers? <laughs> yeah. They've lasted so long. This is like round 13. Oh, that's really good too. Finally, we can get go wide here. Wow, we're in trouble, aren't we? They're gonna get a ton of turrets now. Hmm. I can't believe this. They're actually getting back in this. That double minimorph saved them, I guess, huh? I don't care about using warning shot on our attack turns. Crumble's annoying. Just glimpsing, sure. Um, I don't know what to do here. At a certain point, their small blockers aren't going to be enough because their Sejuani will still push Overwhelm damage to freeze the Nexus. And then they don't have any good trades elsewhere on the board, hopefully. Uh, I'm on NA server, North America. Good old meme country, I guess, about video games. <laughs> We don't have one card though. I guess I'd like an Eye of Nagaburus. Or just Gangplank. Unlucky? <laughs> You're on EU? Gotcha. I do have an EU Riot account, but I don't have um any cards. I've never played Rintera on it. Okay, what are we dying to on the open attack? Probably not much of anything except a Nora portal. Like a portal palooza into something, but it wouldn't spawn right away. Okay, there we go. I think this is really good now. Finally, we have some gas in case we attack. Everything goes wrong. We play Renation. We have a Sejuani and a Battling Bjerg to potentially grab a Gangplank. But we're pushing a ton of damage here. They're going to have a hard time killing all of our stuff. Hopefully. Their turrets are pretty big too, though. But we need Sejuani to... 
Unless they have like a kill spell or like a mini morph, she's going to push overwhelm damage. We have Free of the North just in case. Like they're gonna have to lose like their entire board, hopefully. That's the goal at least for now. <laughs> really? Oh. Okay, that's lethal if we slam for you to the north, but I don't think I want to. Hmm. Maybe we do let it rip. Surely they put something on stack here, right? I really don't want them to play like another mini morph after I play Fury of the North. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Like maybe they'll play Portal Paloozas before Nora dies to try to get the big units and then we can play Fury of the North. Something like that. Surely from this position the game is unlosable. Right? I'm like, we're in a really, really good spot, but they're just like outlasting us at a certain point. Ah, uh, for the win. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We have another Sejuani deck. You know, we're good. No, surely not. Not a vengeance. Third vengeance? They don't play three, do they? Withering Mail. Okay, well, they technically live. Sure. I think I'm more scared of Nora though than I am of Heimer, but Heimer's still annoying because they'll get um a bunch of chunky techs next turn and play Fortamasia. Ah, oh, Jeepers, we're in trouble, aren't we? She's gonna be doing five Nexus damage and get a big portal, I guess. We'll just chump block one or two if we can, and then go in next turn. I think Gangplank wins this the game if we draw Gangplank. What do I want to block with here? I'll block with the four twos, I suppose. Is there any reason not to block? I guess Group Shot could kill the three three, as well. Sure. So it's gonna be. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be five, plus. The portal? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Do we lose? Because the elusive, the elusive attacker. If they play the port, if they play the thingy first. Oh no, no, no. But there's nothing we can do. Bandle City Sajuani. Like, is that a Nar deck? Nar's a fun one. Nar Sajuani is really fun. Ah, oh, please don't play Fort Yeah, I think we just lose. No, 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 no. Where did it all go wrong? How do they have everything this game? Come on. Oh gosh. I think we lose. We're done. <gasps> what? What? Did they just throw that hard? No way. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. What? What? Hold on a second. I think this is still okay. Eh. They could have killed too many more, two Demacia, and they get a Demacia off portal. Yeah, for real. Oh no way! Are you kidding? I think we lose. We push overwhelm damage with Sejuani. That's our only hope that they have to block with everything. But then they just refill their board if they somehow live. Because she's our only one with overwhelm. So how do we kill them? We have to hit like. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Oh, let's go. Woo! <laughs> I swear we lost that game. There's no way we should have won. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 100 LP, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'll take it. I'll take it any day of the week, but I do not feel like I deserve that at all. We're getting close. We're getting close. Wow, that was bonkers. I feel like we totally lucked out there. I don't think they misclicked. I think they were, um... No, it wasn't a misclick. It was just, like, a straight-up, like, misplay. I don't know if they saw the line that they could have killed us. Or maybe they were just, like, Sejuani's going to freeze anything if I try to attack. 
And so they're like, our best chance is to end the round and get a bunch of Nora portals since they had two of the portal polices in hand. And so like next turn we'll just block. But I feel like they could have. Didn't Sejuani only push two damage over the mini T? And they could have blocked everything else. They'd go down to one. Still not dead, but like obviously close. Wow. I'll take it, but I feel like we got away with it there. Yes, 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 yes. That's such a good card. That's such a good card. Elise has been doing pretty well. Elise Gwen. Let me check here. Meditir. Oof. Oof. We could just play Warning Shot next turn. Or we could just Mirai Warden first. Swing in, get a little bit of damage. Maybe stop their fearsome unit. I think I'm okay with this. Heck yeah! If they want to block, it just dies to Spirits Unleashed or Make It Rain. At least Gwen is a 55% win rate. Wow, they take it all. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm not, like, thrilled with the outcome of that, but, um... We can just play Make It Rain this turn. Yeah, Test Speaker blocks Elise. Make It Rain kills the 1-1s, one hopefully. And we can chump block the Arena Caster with Mario Warden. And I think we're looking pretty good. Even running two Teemo, one R. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'd like to see that list. Okay, I think I want to make it rain first. Because I, I don't care if the 1-1 one, one Spider gets through. And if the 1-1 one, one Spider summons, it reduces the odds of us hitting the Legion Saboteur and the Precious Pet. Plus, I want to kill Legion Saboteur before it attacks. Oh, baby! We're on fire. Oh, you just gotta be good! <laughs> what are the odds of that? There are five units, three shots, so... It wasn't like a miracle shot, but that definitely, definitely swung a lot of that in our favor. Because I'm like, so happy to take this, I think. And I'll take the two here and just play Spirits Unleashed next turn. They could... They could play Vile Feast, I suppose. And, um... Oh, wait, we don't have enough for uh, Spirits Unleashed. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'll just swing in like this. Get our Plunder Trigger. And then Spirits Unleashed next turn will wipe the weak spiders. It's like when you're just good, suddenly Make It Rain does exactly what you want it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's the biggest difference between Masters players and Diamond players? I think I'm okay with blocking one of these just to save opponent damage. And get a little bit bigger dude. Because the dude that he summons will be in hand when he plays Spirits Unleashed, so he won't be ticked down one damage. And then he'll just be huge and out of range of Quietus or Vile Feast or anything. Plus, against an aggro deck, I'm fine with just like... Really? I think we just let that go. I don't like that they're already burning us down. I think we just kill them next turn, though. <laughs> At least get close. <laughs> GG. <laughs> the classic next and fur to face chat. Yeah, I feel like it was a little bit early for them to go for burn. Like, um, they just didn't really seem like they had a great hand from that point on. But we obviously had a very good start. That make it rain was bonkers. Okay, 115. Do I just, like, quit playing for the next week and just camp at 115 LP? Oh my gosh, no, 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 that's too close. We have to get at least two or three more wins. That's my problem with this. I wish I was good enough to, like, actually climb up the ladder to get, like, 200 LP or so. Because, like, I want to play other decks and stuff in the next week before seasonals. But I'm, like, so terrified of jumping back and losing my LP and then, like, having to spend, like, three days just trying to climb and get it all back. Morning Shot, I don't think it's a keep against Katarina Leona. I feel like I'd much, much, much rather try to find a Monster Harpoon or... A make it rain even, potentially. Spirits Unleashed could help us trade a little bit. But I don't think we want these two in our opener. We've only been playing for 34 minutes. I feel like the stream's been going a lot longer than that. I don't know why. It's a good card. I'll take this trade any day of the week. Okay. So then we go Mirai Warden. Hopefully pretty difficult for them to stop our plunder trigger 
Next to me, summon another ally. Okay, well, that's fine. Ah, jeepers, I don't like that. It's pretty annoying, actually. So what happens if we attack here? We get to push some damage. We probably, probably, maybe, possibly do two damage with Shell Shocker, because I don't want to block it with Crimson Pigeon. But then we just lose Mariah Warden for free. Or they just take both. We only have one unit on board. Because this thing doesn't have damage on it anyways. Is it worth it to get the Plunder Trigger? Maybe. We have more Mariah Wardens in hand. We can just go wider. I'm like happy to take the trade if they'll offer it. Yeah. I think that's fine. Because Crimson Pigeon is a little difficult for us to deal with once he gets buffed up. And the fact that like we have another Mario Warden makes wow, triple Mario Warden. It's like I'm thinking right um and I actually will block here. Cause I don't want this thing to just kill our next unit, and I'd rather get this in make it range slash spirits unleashed range slash parley range. Plus it just keeps us a little healthier. Oh man. I love that card, but not the time, dude. Nice. Maybe that was actually a mistake there. I probably could have just attacked and then played um, Black Mar Merchant afterwards, but I kind of wanted to see their play first. Kind of make them think I couldn't go uber uber wide, but I don't think that particularly matters in this case. I probably should have just played Mirai Warden, then attacked. Really? Seriously? What are these guys? I think we have to play Slory Soldier now, because otherwise we don't do any damage. They'll just block, 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 right? That's pretty sad. I guess we can just keep these guys back as chump blockers. Or Spirits Unleashed eventually could be good. Okay, Spirits Unleashed or Make It Rain off the top is still pretty good. Preferably Spirits Unleashed. And one of their champs is also a problem. Ooh, what if we have Katarina? We probably are in trouble. I, th I think we just play Babbling Bjerg. Okay. Katarina would have been annoying, but um, we're fine. Wow, we can't actually kill anything here? <laughs> I still want to make it rain soon if I can. But we're still fine. We're only, we only lost two help. Oh, uh, Rocket in the Face. I'll check out the list after this game. Sorry. Took me a while to respond to that. <laughs> I saw it at first, but then I, I took a second to respond. Okay, what do we do here? I feel like we probably need to play Sejuani. We play Sejuani, then they just play Leona, and we are sad again. Or we can play I have Naka Bruce, Oakland Attack. And if we hit Monster Harpoon, we can actually kill some of their stuff. Or if we play Make It Rain, we need to just play Make It Rain right now. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this game's probably going to be with us outlasting them. Kind of like killing their champs when they come down. I'll act like I have something to do. Just serves a decimate. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. We're looking really good now. They don't have any fighting units on board. We can stop all of that. I think it would still be nice to finally stop Legion Saboteur. Wow, Triple Sejuani. That's actually pretty okay with me. Because I'm going to need the Frostbites and Vulnerables to stop something like Katarina. I think I'm not going to play Test Speaker or I have Nakabros this turn. I'm just going to keep up Sejuani. So I'm just going to act like, okay, I got my Plunder Trigger. I'm happy to end the round. Still really annoying that these guys couldn't trade at all. Like, we got Triple Mirai Ward and we got two useless units off of it. Otherwise, we'd be in a much better spot, but, um... I mean, we could... What if we do this? What if we actually do play... One, two, three, four, five. We play I have Naka Bros. So we can trade with everything. Next time we can play Tusk Speaker into Sejuani. And they're a lot more spooked to develop a unit because we're keeping up Sejuani mana. They're down to 9 health. 
But we're also down to 12, and they play Decimate. We do not. <laughs> Gangplank. Oh, man. Okay. He's really good once we get him level 2, but I still feel like Sejuani's probably better to keep up. What? What is happening? <laughs> Did we get the victory? Okay. <laughs> I was a little worried there. I don't know what that was. I guess they just were, like, sad that they got a bad draw. Okay, let's see here. Um, the last few times I've tried pulling up something on the screen, my screen has just gone black. And so I'm not sure if this will work, but, um... Oh, hold on. Here we go. This should work. Okay. Okay. Um, so if I turn off game capture, the screen shouldn't go black. And I can pull up your list. Cool. Let's see here. I love Bando City decks. I feel like they have a lot of cool cards. Two Teemo, one Nar Sejuani. That's cool. I love some of the chains for me. It's two. Murgle. Teeny Dactyl. That's so good on the plunder list. I, um... I think two seasons ago or something, I played a lot of this as the new, as the new season came out. I did really well with it. Like, not this specific deck, right? Like, no Field of Rush, no Pulsing Signpost, but, like, the similar Bandle City plunder list. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I like this list a lot. Wandering Shepherd's fun. Cool. That looks like a lot of fun. I like one copy of Puzzling Signposts, too. I feel like it's nice to have at least one answer. Okay. Now I'm, like, really curious, like... Getting nervous. Like, oh, I don't want to stop playing. I need to qualify for seasonals. Um, I think I think we're on a roll, though. We are feeling confident. We got this if we just keep playing, you know? I'll probably be looking to mostly just play friendlies over the next few days, I suppose. But that makes it hard to, like, stream a lot. Because if it's, like, five days in a row, I have to find people to, like, play an hour just against me for no reason. You know what I mean? But um, tomorrow's the tournament. The Mastering Retirement Tournament I'll probably play. Or in vain. Are we sad about that? I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. They might be pretty slow. Wow, that hand sucks! Holy smokes. I guess we're playing Double Spirits Unleashed. Because <laughs> they might be go bigger than us per unit, but we could go wide if we had stuff like Mariah Warden and stuff. Dune the MVP of the deck, TBH? Yeah, he looks really good. Crazy cards for Sejuani. Okay, I need some cards, please. A Tusk Speaker or Mariah Warden off the top would be really nice. That's also a card. I guess we could just open with I have not Cabros next turn. I don't think I like that, though. But we can't go too far on board, or can't go too far behind on board against the Demacia deck. Hmm, this sucks. We'll pass. We'll see if we hit another unit next turn. I don't want to use Maker Rain here, because there's a chance I might just have to play Spirits Unleashed next turn. And then we can defend with Ayunakubros the following turn to kill Petrolay Broadwing. Man, I don't like this hand at all. Hopefully that just means you draw good stuff later on. I guess we're going to be really, really, really reliant on our champions to finish this game, huh? I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't really like the opening hand before I mulliganed. It was like what, Parley and the Black Market Merchant. That's not a very aggressive hand. I just think like it's so so much better if we hit like Tusk Speakers, Mirai Wardens, things like that. Hmm. This can't trade with the Range Knight Defector if they play it. If they play the Forge and Ally into this. I guess we just take some damage, huh? The warrior need but from deed. This did not end up going very well. I'm gonna blame it on the draw though. That draw was really awkward. We didn't get to play a card until like turn three. <laughs> and it was Spirits Unleashed. That's pretty brutal. That's actually really, really, really bad. I think this game's over. I don't even know if I want to block it. Like, what does it do? She still kings, kills Gangplank next turn with the Forge and Ally.
I guess we just try to sit back. For a turn. I have to head out to get ready for class. Good luck in the rest of your games. Talk to these. Cool. I'll see you, Max. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for hanging out. I still don't think I even want to run uh, Gangplank in here. Even if, yeah, even if they didn't do this, I wouldn't want to run Gangplank in because I imagine they'd play something like um, Sharp Sight or at least Troll Chant, so it wouldn't really do anything. We'll have nine mana next turn, so we can't play Spirits Unleashed plus I have Nagaburos. I guess I can play Make It Rain now. And they'll try maybe get rid of the challenger before they can heal it up or something. Nice. Okay, that works. Getting the Broadwing's really nice too. Because this guy's a problem. We're probably just dead next turn, but. Oh man. Yeah, this this was a really awkward job. I don't think I'm gonna take too much away from this one. Maybe just bulgin better. <laughs> I could have been a little bit more cautious. If they let us get it one unit off, we could play Shell Shocker as a blocker, and still have enough for Spirits Unleashed this turn. I don't know if Spirits Unleashed is really the play here. It's probably just Shell Shocker plus I have Bros, to be honest. We do have Babbling Beard as well. We could try to fight Sejuani, but like if we play Sejuani right now, or Babbling Beard right now, I think we just lose. I don't know. I don't think we're going to be able to kill them next turn, obviously. But I mean more like... Okay, well they give us an extra option, so I'm just going to play Babbling Beard. Get our Sejuani ready for next turn. If they attacked right there, I would have had to play... Ah, oh, rats. Okay. That's actually not the worst thing in the world. After we play Spirits Unleashed, I suppose. A little clunky. I don't think we can get out of here. Because any two of their units are going to hit this turn. Besides Broadwing. So. Okay. GG. That was a tough one. A little unfortunate to lose to an Orn deck. <laughs> but I guess it's what happens. When you get a little bit of a brick draw, I suppose. Wow, that was a tough loss. Okay, back into it. We got this one. Easy wins, coming up. I do love this deck, though. I don't know. There are, like, there are so many people that hate um, some of my favorite decks, like Plunder and Scouts. People hate them sometimes. Like I hear a lot of people talking about them, but I love them. And like I always understand liking and hating different styles of decks. I'm sure I hate decks that people like. But there's just something about the style that I enjoy. It doesn't, because, like, I don't know, maybe it's just my opinion, but I feel like people trash aggro as too much of a brain dead deck. Like, I feel like there are a lot of decisions to be made. I will keep Parley. Um, turn two, Mirai Warden. Turn three, we have something to do. Either Tusk Speaker or maybe just draw into something else. Um, like, do we take an extra draw at our champion? Maybe not. Maybe, like, Champions are dead anyways in this matchup. Like, we want Sejuani. But we're going to want a Tusk Speaker on turn 3, I suppose. And we don't have many other turn 3 draws that are really good. So I'm going to say there's a good chance we just run into a Champion or a Battling Beard to help us out here. The Rally Scout interaction makes me grumpy. I do not like that part. I do not like that part, for sure. But, um, the rest of the, the deck's gameplay. Like, I love... Just normal scout attacks. Like with Quinn, I think Quinn's a really fun champ. But yeah, the rally scout part is a little annoying. <laughs> also, fearsome, heck yeah. Easy plunder triggers. Plunder, heck yeah. Okay. So I'll just swing in here. They might have like parley um catch to get an easy block here. Okay. I'm I'm just going to parley right now. I do not want them to get the darkened spear or something on this. So obviously like we're wasting a plunder trigger. But I'm okay with that for the sake of trying to kill. Yeah, so like we force out the catch, that's fine. Um, that's a little annoying. They can kill our board. But we, we take our best shot. That was our best chance at killing him. 
Uh, MF Quinn's a sneaky tournament pick, I hear. But he's not. it's not like a very... Especially on ladder, it's not an incredibly popular deck at the moment. It is mostly the Quinn version. Like, let's see here. Quinn... Or no. Oh, yeah, Quinn. Okay. Quinn... <laughs> yeah, it's literally just um, HX Quinn Vein. There's not even enough data for uh, scouts. Uh, what do we do here? One, two, three, four, five... Well, we can play um, Babblingbeard next turn, get in with a 3-4. They play Dark Aegis. It won't kill her. If we take the time to play Spirits Unleashed here... I think it's fine. I don't know if they have a- they don't have a fantastic turn 4 play here, I don't think. Like, they could play Range Unite Defector, but won't be able to equip it with this action. And, like, if they don't equip Quinn right away... Oh, well, they might just tumble. That's fine. Okay. So I'll just swing in here. If they want to trade with Quinn, I'm happy. If not, we get a, another 2 damage in. Sweet. But yeah, sorry. Um, uh, My point was, I think Misfortune Quinn is a pretty good tournament deck. Kind of sneaks up in some of the lineups. Like, it's a pretty good mid-range deck. But yeah, at the moment, I haven't seen a ton on ladder. I had decent success with, success with it on ladder, though. Um, Ranger Knight is my new pick to get nerfed. Yeah, I don't like Ranger Knight. It's a pretty good card. I'll play Make It Rain? No. What if we just let this go? Play Babbling Bjerg? Get our champion for next turn? Like, if we find Sejuani, we're looking really good. Like, I don't think we really care about this 2-1 staying alive. He's not ever killing anything again unless we play another Spirit Stone Leash. I think we just want our Sichuani, hopefully. Nice. Okay. How do we level Sichuani? You. Let's kill that one. That gives us an easy target, too. I don't really know if I wanted to go after Qu or Vayne with Sichuani. Like, next turn we're going to have to level her. Or uh, play Sichuani on something. Like, we can't wait for Aatrox to be played. But I think that's fine. We kind of just like get in there with Sejuani first. They can't kill her. They don't have any... Or I guess they could have Concerted Strike. That'd be annoying. But that's still only 5 damage. So I think we're good here. Um, obviously the Ranger Knight Effect is just one of the most annoying cards for us to deal with defensively. What? Another fish fight or something? I'm not sure what that was about. Maybe they're just setting up another fish fight. But um, if they do it next turn, so Giovanni levels, that'll make it a little bit more difficult. Nice. Okay, we're looking good. We're going to need to... Uh, interesting. Okay, we could play Maker Rain. We could play Make It Rain if it resolves. That freezes everything. But I don't think that works. Like, I think we have to play... I think we play Warning Shot right now. That'll level up Sejuani. Then once they put the spawn stack, we can react with Make It Rain. So that they don't get the chance to react to it. And we just can't play... Or no, we can play Getting Plague this turn, yeah? Cool. So I guess we'll just... I was thinking we could play, um, like, Jagged Butcher plus... Black Market Merchant, but I don't think we're looking to go wide anymore. I think we're looking to just finish them off with our champions. We also just desperately need our Make It Rain to hit. But either way, Aatrox dies this turn if they attack. Sure. This is really good for us. Now? Like, this is really, 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 really good for us. Babbling Beard will block, put him down to two, and so the Powder Keg will kill him off. Or it just freezes Nexus, potentially also kills him off, right? So, like, either way, I think we're happy. Wow, okay. That's fine. <laughs> not, not what I was hoping for, but it works. Like, it does get the job done, right? It just doesn't freeze. Catch. 
that's also fine. Now we know their hand, and so we're pretty free to develop Spirits Unleashed next turn to get the, um, Freeze. Or we can just Open Attack. Is Open Attack better? I think it is, because if they have a Strike spell, it's going to happen anyways. But Gangplank's skill is a pain for them to deal with. So I think we're better off to just Open Attack. Because I'm pretty sure even if Gangplank dies, it still goes through. And if they happen to top deck a strike spell, like, good for them, I suppose they could kill one champ, but they lose the other. Yeah, like, right now, if they, if they go Aatrox here, if they strike him, it still freezes everything. And so these guys will die. And we still have our... Okay. They're down two. So we just wait for next turn to play Spirits Unleashed once the keg spawns. And I think we get in. Ooh, that's a card. That could help them out, but I think the two damage is going to be too much. That's also pretty good. They're going to have to draw... Oh, sure, 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 sure. As long as they can't gain any life, I think we're fine. I'll just block. I don't think we lose unless they get off a world ender next turn. And still, like, somehow live through the attack, but... As long as our Spirits Unleashed goes through, I don't think they can do much. They'd have to strike the Keg. Well, they just drew Aatrox, actually. That sucks. So if they develop Aatrox, then we're in a little bit of a trouble, I suppose. But then we can just kill him. Okay. Sweet. I think we get there. Yeah? Also, Dark and Harp is number two. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I love Styradu, but the Dark and Harp, like the actual equipment itself, is definitely really good. I think Styradu is really cool. So either this kills them, or it freezes them, hopefully. Okay, cool. GG. GG, that was fun. Now that Aatrox is nerfed, the deck is nowhere near as oppressive to go against. It's kind of fun to try the matchup in different decks. Like, Kane, Kane Aatrox has been an interesting one to try lately. Um, especially playing, like, Tlia Ziggs. That's a hard one sometimes. But I was in the Mastering Terror like, coaching group thing. And Prodigy was talking about the deck and how when you're playing against Aatrox Kane list, you pretty much have to play Tlia Ziggs like a combo deck. And kind of, like, go for, like, Tlia into Preservarium. Or Preservarium, like, copied by Tlia. And look for your, like, Herald of the Magus. Eat both their champs, kind of like write them out that way. Look at this hand. I like this hand. But do I like it against Katarina Yasuo? I don't think I do. What are their one drops? I don't know. Really? That's kind of funny. Literally the exact same cards in both slots, okay. Um, yeah, you got it. Please play one jump with one health. Okay, I don't even know if they do, but uh, I'll probably just play card draw. Steal their good cards. Yes, please. Oh, that's actually really interesting. That stops a stun. That's That could potentially be really good. I'll take this block. He's probably dying to it anyways next turn. And so it makes it much more likely that our potential second right warning unit can get through. With like out an easy trade. Or we could just develop Mariah Warden this turn. <gasps> Plus make it rain if they have another house spider. Nice, like Crimson Pigeon uh, can't get killed by Spiderling. That's perfect. I don't think I want to buff up Crimson Pigeon this turn though. Do I want to play Make It Rain this turn? We'll probably have to if we want to get our Plunder Trigger. Hmm. Never played. Oh, interesting. Interesting.
What if we just play Parley Nobify? Nobify on the Blade's Edge. Push for damage. Nice. Okay, uh, that's a lot of damage you're getting. I don't know if that was the best play, but I kind of messed up their play too. Hmm. I don't do meditation. We'll pass. We don't need to do anything yet. Okay. Mm. I guess we could just play Make It Rain. That seems fine. We get our Plunder Trigger. They can't rally with Katarina until we get our attack in next turn. So we're potentially dealing 7 damage on the open. I'd really love to get Sejuani soon. We're still turn, 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 yeah, 2 turns away still. We have a really good open. Oh, sure, sure, sure. We were walking into Flock if we used Crimson Pigeon ability. Ah, oh, man. This feels really awkward. We could just let Katarina get another attack in, I suppose. Well, we have both of our champs. Sure. How do we want to handle this? We could just play Sejuani. I face my fate. Your turn. I'll block with this since it's dead to Morai Warden anyway. Ah, uh, excuse me, it's dead to Katarina Blade's Edge. And then I'll pass. If they play Katarina, we can freeze. Ooh. Cheeky. So now we have to open attack next turn or else we get stunned by Katarina when they play that. That's a little annoying. But we still push a ton of damage this way with um, Gangplank plus I have Nakubros. They have still Tempest. That's a little annoying to be honest. I don't know how we get through here. We could play Make It Rain. Then they play their cards and we play Sejuani afterwards. Sure. No going back. Okay, so that stuns Gangplank. But now we play Sejuani. You own what and they could have Blades Edge Flock, but it wouldn't be enough. Next turn, Yasuo levels though, which is really annoying. But we have a card draw and Bjerg, so there's a good chance we can get our champions back. But that is a little worrisome. They tap below Steel's Tempest, so we definitely get to kill Katarina, hopefully. Hey, over here. Hmm, that seems testy. Okay, I thought they were going to blink attack into Sejuani, I'm like, that's really risky. Because if they had a turn Discipline, then we could like potentially Warning Shot. Hmm. Oh, that's a little annoying. But this deals 5 damage to the Sejuani, so she'll still live. Because she'll be leveled at that time. No way they won't recall, right? <laughs> That'd be really, really brutal. Okay, that's fine. As long as they don't have a second Katarina in hand, maybe we can get out of this. They're down to 5 health, like, we only need a little bit more damage on board. But, the stuns are brutal. 
Because, yeah, hold on. I don't think there's any way we win this. They have a stun each round dealing 5 damage. They have a stun attacking enemy. Uh, wait a second. That might do it. We'll keep this as a... We'll use this, sorry, as a way to find plunder triggers. Yes, there we go. Next turn we slam FTR. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they don't have deny. That's probably our best way out of this. Because, like, next turn we'll have 12 mana. <laughs> so I guess we need to make it rain to, um... Are you kidding me? Alright, GG. Man, I don't like losing to that deck. I don't know if we played that horribly, or if they just have lots of stuns that are good against our deck. Like, flock decks and stuff are pretty good against our deck usually. But man, Yasuo striking for 5 damage is brutal. And the Wimps of Hillock doing so many stuns. Good game though, but tough. Tough loss. Katarina Gwen! Okay, I do like playing against this deck. Decent? Not perfect. I do like Mirai Warden. Mega Rain's not atrocious either. Do we just full keep? I feel like we run out of gas really fast though. They have Boisterous Host. Jagged Butcher doesn't do anything. So I'll keep Make It Rain Tusk Speaker. Okay, that's a good one drop. I am happy to play Shell Shocker here. I think a Three Sisters could do a lot in the matchup, but not coming up to really tech for them. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I feel the same way. I'm always like, man, even like one copy of Three Sisters would be really nice in here. <laughs> but uh, I guess like the point is you already have quote unquote Fury of the North from Sejuani's Champ spell. You already have freezes from Sejuani's level up, and so like how necessary is it? But I definitely get the thought. I think about that a lot too. Okay. I'm pretty happy to open attack here. And then just play our two units. Because I don't think they have much interaction here. Whoa! That's really, really bad, I think. They're going so far behind really, really early on. Now we get to steal your cards. And I don't think I need... Oh! <laughs> Make it rain plus flock. That's so nasty! Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Quietus here. It's a little unfortunate. Um, if we hit Spirits Unleashed, Quietus is pretty much a dead card. But yeah, I'm just going to be playing Butcher next... Or, um, Babbling Berg next turn, so I don't really need to keep up mana. Like, obviously, maybe they play Gwen, and I'd, I'd want to play Mega Rain Flock instead. Yeah, now I'll play Mega Rain Flock, Black Market Merchant, if they play Gwen. Okay, maybe I do just play Mega Rain Black Market Merchant. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the next one. I guess with flock and stuff. Wow, this went really, really poorly for our opponent. I don't think this was me really doing anything special. I think they just had a really awful draw. I haven't seen Whispered Words, though. That's an interesting card to play in the deck. Because with the Hallow Triggers, you can trigger... Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, what does our opponent do from this point? Like, this is brutal. All right, GG. Yeah, that was that was like just an insane draw on our part and a really really bad draw on our opponent. I think I don't think I did much there. All right, that's probably gonna be it for today's video though. In stream, I hope you guys enjoyed. We finally got back into qualifying range for the seasonals, I believe. No, we're not. Are you kidding me? Oh gosh, that's so miserable. One place outside. Okay, we'll have to play a little bit more, I suppose, over the next few days to try to climb up a little bit. But that was pretty cool. Cool. Hallowed stacks are overwhelming nuts. Yeah, that was like an insane draw. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. 
Uh, I'll be playing in the Master Room Terra Turner tomorrow, so that'll probably be tomorrow's stream. Or is it Thursday? Sorry. Wow, I could have sworn it was Friday. Okay, this Saturday I'll be playing in the Master Room Terra Tournament, so I'll be streaming that. I I'll be streaming normal tomorrow then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're on Twitch, uh, I always upload the VODs to YouTube in case you missed one. And if you're on YouTube, come say hi. We always enjoy chatting with you. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Hope you have a good one.